Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to speak on ancient biblical customs and manners. Um, which ultimately uh, bring us back to the way of the ancient, the way of the East, and which could be challenging, you know, um, being as though we have been raised here uh, primarily in Babylon the Great, which is um, in the Bible known as the land of the North. We're in the North Western Hemisphere, right? And the Bible is known as the land of the North, but it's also known as the West, all right? And... Um, the various different captivities where you brothers and sisters have been scattered, okay, and um, especially here in the West, all right, we have been raised in a particular manner and raised with particular customs that differ <laughs> entirely from the way of the East and the ancient way. Now, what you have happening is when it comes time for, you know, the men of the Lord to bring out those ancient customs and ways, you know, it rubs a lot of you Israelites the wrong way, all right? And um, we always tell you, in order for you to fully understand the Holy Scriptures, all right, you cannot think from the perspective of the West. You have to put yourself in an ancient mindset. This is why we are Hebrews, all right, to, to be a Hebrew, okay, yes, we are Hebrew Israelites. To be a Hebrew Israelite, it brings you back to an ancient way of thinking, all right, looking at and understanding things. And over the years, as we have brought out, starting with our apostles and elders, ancient customs and ways, you know, um, it's been used as a way to ridicule us, um, and ultimately um, use the vibration and thinking and talking points of this world against the laws <laughs> or against the ancient way, you see, which is a very, very immature thought process. This is why the scriptures tell us in understanding we must be men, see, but in malice be ye children. In understanding we must be men. Okay, and the scriptures say that all scripture is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for exhortation. Okay, and there are particular times when points come up or things come up, and the way that we have been taught by our apostles and elders is to stand on what is true, stand on what the scriptures say. You see, and when we do that, because of the way a lot of uh, you Israelites, all of us were raised, it can come as a shock and it can turn you off. All right. But you better be careful because what you're really saying is that how you were raised here in the West is far better. And you're mocking the ancient way as, um, you know, even unto this day, you know, we bring out the fact that we have a law on rape. Yes, the Bible has a law on how to handle, all right, different situations that deal with rape. A man taking a woman. Now, if she's, uh, uh, you know, married and she doesn't cry out, her and the man is put to death. You know, if she's betrothed, meaning engaged, you see, or married to a man and she does cry out, then only the man is put to death because she did what is right. You see, but then if... She is married, if she is not married or not betrothed, meaning promised to another man, and the man took her, well, he would have to then deal with responsibility. He, he, he would have to take that, you know, woman in as a wife. He would have to pay the father the dowry, you see. And when people hear things like this, and he couldn't put her away. That 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 law being intact would keep a man if he knew that he had to deal with the responsibilities of, you know, um, dealing with the the wife and taking her in. 
then he wouldn't do it. Okay? But the, the bottom line is when we bring out these ancient laws, when we bring out these ancient customs, you have men who are supposed to be, you know, um, trained in the law. You have men who boast in the law that get very, very uncomfortable. And they'll even lie on what the scriptures say just to save face so that they don't look crazy. All right. And there's no way to bring out an ancient book. All right. In a modern world and not look crazy. This is an ancient book. We're walking and waking up into a path that was already laid. All right. Now, the scriptures tell you to use wisdom as we go into the law, statutes and commandments. All right. There's a lot of things that we cannot do. All right. But we do bring it out for the point of edification to tell you this is how it was done. And you have many Israelites that have not grown, okay, past the point of being turned off by it. You can simply say, well, that's how it was done and you can move on or you can just continue to cry and fuss. But what you're going to do is find yourself bucking up against your Haobashim Shai. Now, I have here a book in PDF form titled Biblical Manner and Customs written by James M. Freeman. Um, the 1972 version is preferable, but they have newer updated versions. Um, you can get the PDF just by Googling it. Okay, or you can go to Amazon and buy the book or to whatever bookstore that has it. All right, now in this uh, book, in this book, it uh, brings out many, many ancient customs that help you to understand why things were did the way they were done in the Bible. OK. And to uh, ultimately link you to the way of the East. Now, I wanted to read some of the preface and then I want to get a few scriptures and I'm going to shut this lesson off. Um, I don't want to make it too long, but it says the preface. It says, though the Bible is adapted to all nations. It is in many respects an oriental book, all right, meaning it, it goes back to an ancient way, all right, the original way, okay? It is an oriental book. It represents the modes of thought and the peculiar customs of a people who in their habits widely differ from us. One who lived among them for many years has graphically said modes, customs, usages, all that you can set down to the uh, to the score of the national, the social or the conventional are precisely as different from yours as the East is different from the West. And see, we're over here in the West where we've been taught a, a total contrary way all right that the heavenly father has set all right we're living in total contrary than the way of the east now particular things we bring out you have brothers and sisters who may have been raised in like west africa okay or 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 in different cultures to where things that we bring out really don't bother them they understand where we're coming from all right, like when we bring out the age that women were when they started to get prepared for marriage, people lose their mind. Yes, and you can't find any other uh, research. You can't go into any scholar or, or find any scripture that says otherwise. When a woman entered into puberty, all right, she became eligible for marriage. Now, every man didn't take the woman as soon as she uh, started her cycle, but there were women who were. That is an ancient custom. Women didn't wait around until they were 18, 19, and 21. In the ancient world, women were prepared, okay, to be wives, groomed and raised up to be wives and aiders of the husband, which was ultimately a family, which was a business. Okay, there was a, a dowry involved, the uh, the uh, father and the mother usually went and found uh, a, a spouse for their daughter or even and sometimes went and found a spouse for their uh, a son. 
which is totally different than how we do it here in the West. But see, in the East, in ancient time, <laughs> all right, that, you know, that process started early. You see? When you were 12, 13, 14, all right, you were you were being prepared to be married off. OK, um, which if your your father and your mother are wise to, a, a, you know, a son of a, a wise family, a family with substance, a family with, you know, morals. See. Now, hearing that automatically what we do being raised here in the West is we frown up, we get mad. We get angry when half of you, when you were in high school, were sleeping around with coaches, police officers, teachers. You see? But see, in the East, it was done in order. Okay? And the first thing you do think about when you think about arranged marriages is, what about, what if she don't like him? You know? Well, see, <laughs> the way of the East was way different than the West. See? And when we bring out particular customs of the East, too many of you Israelites lose your damn mind. Okay? As you see what it said in the preface, all right, the customs of a people who in their habits widely differ from us. Okay? Now, let's go here to the book of Psalms 77 and 5. I have considered the ways of old. All right. The years of ancient times, you must know these things. OK, this is why a lot of you haven't found rest in your souls as Israelites is because you, you predicate. All right. The most high, the Bible. All right. And everything else, it has to be centered around your comfort. No, when you come into this truth. All right. It's like a culture shock when you learn the true image, vibration and way of Yahweh Bashim Shai and the ancient men of the Lord. Okay? It's like a shock reading about the things that happened, the the the, the laws themselves. When you read the law, statutes and commandments, they differ widely from how we were raised. Okay? We've seen, you know, uh, badass kids get whooped, but we've never seen a badass kid get brought before the whole congregation in the, you know, the uh, neighborhood and get stoned. OK, we've seen, uh, 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 you know, uh, Waukesha jump into a fight between two men and, and maybe kick the dude, hit him in the nuts. Well, in the Bible, she gets her hand chopped off if she does that. See. And in and, and, and this Western world, you have a thing called child support. Well, in the scriptures, <laughs> that was uh, that was uh, uh, unheard of. You see. Now, in societies like Egypt and, you know, uh, other societies, Babylon, you had, you know, women's rights and this and that. And women had a say so in marriage, but not in the ancient way of the Israelites. You see, so talking points of ancient men who are being raised back up here in these latter days, because that's what's happening. OK, as a matter of fact, let's get that in. Uh, let me close this window. Give me one second here. It's a beautiful rainy day, so I had the window open, but I'm not too far from an airport, <clears throat> so I'll close it for the time being. Um, I want to get the book of Sirach, the 36th chapter. I always bring this scripture out, so you should already know where I'm going. Um, Sirach 36 and 15. Let's get to the point. It says, give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. Ancient men are being raised up. So we may say things that may be shocking to you. We may bring out ancient ways that may, you know, uh, be forgotten in this time. Okay. But once you see that it's, it's, it's true and it's proved in the scripture. Yeah. You may have an emotion about it, but you, you need to let it go. It's time for you Israelites to mature in the Holy Spirit. And with these ancient ways, we always make it a point to tell you this is not something you can do now. This is not something you do now. You have to uh, uh, follow the laws of the land. And there's a lot of ways that you read in the ancient way where you're like, damn, I couldn't see myself doing it. I couldn't see myself in that situation. All right. But you, you, the, the, you leave it there. That's it. 
pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai for, for a stronger spirit to understand the, the, the things that are coming out and you move on. But when you start to fight up against these things and lie to trim your way to, uh, to seek love because you don't want to look crazy. All right. You, you, you uh, ultimately as a teacher, you're not really fit and you're becoming uh, uh, you're in danger. All right. Now, let's go back to where we were in the book of Psalms. 77 and 5, it says, I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. Okay, let's see if we can get a cross reference. Yep, uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy fathers and they will show thee. Thy elders and they will tell thee. Okay, and they're going to tell you of a way that is far different from the way you've been raised. And that's okay. Something is supposed to be a shock. We're being brought back into a very, very ancient way. All right. But to use the vibration of this world to try to make the men of the Lord to sink, come off as sickos or pedophiles or rapists just because they're bringing out an ancient custom. Like uh, of, of, of uh, recent, you had the custom of a man dealing with his niece. Now, we're not teaching men to go around and look, you know, to wait for his niece to get of age and, and, and try to pop her. No, we're telling you that this happened before in the Bible. We can go to the examples of this happening and we can go into the law, statutes, and commandments, and it's not a condemned act. Now, is this something we're telling you that you should want to do? No, we're merely telling you that, yes, we have particular of our forefathers who did deal with their nieces. And that's it. Okay. It's nothing more than that. It happened before. And you have this guy, uh, Paul Kersey, who's hiding behind a fake profile, telling us what we should openly teach. Well, you should openly show us who the hell you are and you go out and teach and show us uh, uh, who you really are. It's a very cowardly act to hide behind a profile for years, giving orders. OK, and you, you wonder why men like this ain't ignored and blocked. But the Heavenly Father has something being worked on that <laughs> we can't even uh, imagine yet. And it's all going to come out when it needs to. But right here, you have to remember the days of old. Paul Kersey said, if it's not pertaining to salvation, why teach it? Well, if the topic comes up, the scriptures say all scripture. Let's get it. All scripture. First Timothy three or second Timothy three. Second Timothy three and sixteen. <clears throat> All scripture is given by inspiration of the most high and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. OK, all scripture. Are you ashamed of the ancient way? Now, of course, we live in Babylon the Great. We can't go into the law, statutes, and commandments and, and, and bring forth our own judgment. We're not sovereign. But does that mean we can't bring out Leviticus 20 and 13? Let's get Leviticus 20 and 13. See, when it comes to stuff like this, Jake doesn't have a problem with it. Okay? Leviticus 20 and 13. If a man... Okay, also lie with mankind as he lie with woman. Both of them have committed abomination. They should be surely put to death. Their blood should be upon them. You can go to the book of Romans, the first chapter. The women with women is, is condemned. Okay, mankind lying with mankind. All right, it, 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 mankind in itself is man and woman. Okay, so right here, all right, uh, the, it gives you a law that was practiced in the ancient world. Okay. Now, common sense or good sense, because common sense ain't common. Good sense would tell you, of course, we can't practice this, but we go into the law and bring out the ancient way. If we were in the ancient world and it's profitable, we can bring these things out. All scripture is given by inspiration of the most high. All right. And it's profitable for doctrine. We can go and show you that a woman ain't supposed to wear a, a, a man's armor. 
all right, or dress as a man and a man shouldn't dress as a woman. All of these things are in the scriptures. Okay, there's various laws, all right, that we can't keep in this society, but we can bring it out to show you this is how it was. That's it. Okay, so let's go back. See if we can get, I know one is in Job, the eighth chapter. Or Job 8 and 8, I believe. Let's see if it takes us there. Let's go to the book of Job 8 and 8. I believe that's it. Job 8. Yep. Job 8 and 8. For inquire, I pray thee of the former age and prepare thyself for the search of thy fathers. In the NLT, just ask previous generation, pay attention to the ex experience of our ancestors. And there's nothing wrong with that. You see, in understanding, let's see here, where's that scripture? Here we go. 1 Corinthians 14 and 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice be ye children, all right? No one was bad for you. Once a child touches the stove and see that it burnt them, all right, or once a child is corrected by their parent, all right, for something that they did, they know not to do that. So in children, in, in malice, you be children. You, you be as children when it comes to ignorance. All right, I ain't doing that. My daddy said, no, uh -uh, I ain't doing that. I'm going to get in trouble. But in understanding, be men. NLT, dear brothers and sisters. Don't be childish in your understanding of these things. Be innocent as babies when it comes to evil, but be mature in understanding matters of this kind. And he's going into to particular things that were going on in the church. But we can apply it to what we're speaking of here as well. Now, let's go back to the biblical manner and customs, and then we'll get a few other scriptures and we'll close it out. So it says, uh, though the Bible is adapted in all nations... It is in many respects an oriental book. See, the God of this world can't guide your mind as to who Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is. See, as the scriptures say, we got to get that. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. A lot of you Israelites are too goddamn old and big to act the way you act. Okay, second Corinthians four. And three, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them who are lost in whom the God of this world, Satan, the prince of the power of the air, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. You have a lot of Israelites that ultimately just took Jesus Christ and braided his hair and, and, and gave him a tan. See, so it's just a uh, 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 white Jesus painted black with cornrows, all right, uh, with, a, with, a, you know, with a thicker beard, all right, under the guise of being an Israelite. And some of you are ashamed to even at attach the Hebrew because you don't want to do nothing with the ancient way. Well, we're commanded to understand the ancient way. This is why I always push brothers and sisters to get into the uh, biblical manner and customs book. All right, because a lot of things you read may go over your head but that book will give you, as you read through it, it goes through Genesis, Exodus, particular things you see and read, it'll tie you to that way. And you're like, oh, this is why they did that. Oh, this was a custom back then. You see, travelers who are on a journey going through, uh, uh, you know, particular uh, lands, you had men who would sit in front of their houses waiting for those people. So that they can offer them food and a lodging place. These are all ways of the ancient world that we have not been able to experience. So why there's many things that may challenge you, there's a lot that may allow you to grow. So you can see, damn, we, we come from a noble people. We come from a, a, a wow, this, this is how it was done. Then you can really see that the West ain't the best.
Because a lot of you really think Esau and the way he has his society set up is really in order and on point. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And this is why, all right, a lot of our people who uh, uh, know that they're Israelites don't have rest for their soul because they're stuck in the West and they don't know what's best. All right, let's read some more of this and then we'll uh, get a few more scriptures and cut it off. It says, though the Bible is adapted in all nations, it is in many respects an Oriental book. It goes back to the original way. It represents the modes of thought and peculiar customs of a people who in their habits widely differ from us. One lived among them for many years. All right. One who lived among them for, for many years has graphically said modes, custom, usages, all that you can set down to the score of the national, the social, the conventional are precisely as different from yours as the East is precisely different from the West. And a lot of these ancient customs still go on in particular uh, uh, Eastern cultures. Okay. This is why you have a lot of American men leaving the West to go to various different cultures. Okay. To get wives. Why do you think that is? Because women of the ancient world were taught to be wives. Okay. So they're like, well, Shema, go back to the origin. I'm learning all of this knowledge. I'm, 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 I'm coming into manhood. I'm learning what it is to be a man. But it doesn't mesh with the modern woman. So you know what? I'm out of here. I'm going to go the, to another culture and get me a wife. <laughs> it says, they sit when you stand. They lie when you sit. They do to the head what you do to the feet. They use fire when you use water. All right. You shave the beard. They shave the head. OK. Now, in morning uh, in particular uh, morning rituals, we would shave. OK. But we grew our beards and stuff like that. But here in the West, just like in ancient Egypt, all right, showing you we're in Egypt again, shaving is promoted. You couldn't get into the temple of Pharaoh in certain dynasties because in certain dynasties they had beards. But in majority of them, uh, you, you had to shave to even get into the temple. I'm talking about your whole, it couldn't be a piece of hair on your body <laughs> in ancient Egypt to get into the, 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 the Pharaoh's temple. See, but here, what do you see uh, promoted, right? Shaving, Gillette. That's because we're in Egypt again. All right. But we, we grew our beards. Okay. Uh, as, as men back then, it says um, they use fire when you use water. It says, you move the hat as a, a term of saying hi. They touch the breast like a salute. You use the lips in salutations. They touch the forehead and the cheek. Okay. And also the, the holy kiss where you lock cheeks, which they still do that in particular customs. It ain't like you, a man is kissing a man, but you lock your cheek onto theirs. You do it from one side to the other. These are all ancient customs. And when... Niggas hear it, they automatically get turned off. What a holy kiss, nigga, nigga, you kiss me, kiss a nigga. Nigga. And then you have a lot of these Egyptology cats. They made a big fuss about marriageable age in ancient Israel. Well, why don't, why don't somebody post what is marriageable age in ancient Egypt for a woman? Somebody post it. <laughs> anyway, it says... They touch the breast. You use the lips in salutation. They touch the forehead and the cheek. Your house looks outward. Their house looks inward. You go out to take a walk. They go up to enjoy fresh air. You drain your land. All right. They sigh for water. Okay. The way Esau has this society set up is contrary to the East. You bring your daughters out. They keep their wives and daughters in. Your ladies go barefaced through the streets. Their ladies are always covered. The oriental customs of today are mainly the same as those ancient times. It is said 
by a recent writer that the classical world has passed away. We must reproduce it if we wish to see it as it was. And we try to bring out the ancient way to, 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 to link you to how things were. And we're met with opposition. We're, 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 we're called pedophiles. We're called this and that. And it's like, all right, we're used to it. But God damn, at some point, you got to grow the hell up, man. The West was far different. Don't be ashamed of it, especially if you're a teacher. You expect this from, you know, Jake, who, who just coming out of Babylon. You expect this from a woman. All right. But there's grown ass men with full beards. OK, gray hair. And, 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 and when they hear these particular ancient customs, they cry and scream and use it against us. It says, while this fact must be remembered in the interpretation of some of the New Testament passages, it is nevertheless true that many ancient customs still exist in their primitive integrity. If a knowledge of Oriental customs is essential to a right understanding of numerous scriptural passages, it is a cause of rejoicing that these customs are so stereotyped in their character that we have but to visit we we have but to visit the bible lands of the present day to see the modes of life in patriarchal times and see those ancient times those ancient societies were real patriarchs you got women screaming we live in a patriarch but they're walking around with their ass out their breast out they're on talk shows talking shit they're 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 walking and gathering abroad drunk doing whatever the hell they wanted you really think you live in a patriarch over here in the west Take your ass over there to uh, Sudan. Take your ass over to Russia. Go to Iran. See? And then you will see a, a patriarch. You don't live in a patriarch over here in America. <laughs> That's a very convoluted understanding. That that term is being thrown around. We live in a patriarch. No, you don't. <laughs> Goodness gracious, man. And a patriarch is the men being ahead. See? But that's all right, man. It says the design of this volume, this book, is to illustrate the Bible by any explanation of Oriental customs to which it refers. The Bible becomes more than a real book when we can read it understandingly, read it understandingly. With all thy getting, get understanding. Let's get that real quick. Okay. Wisdom is the principal thing. <clears throat> Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all thy and with all thy getting. Get understanding. NLT. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. And see, a lot of you don't have good judgment because you don't understand. A lot of you are just, okay, you heard the curses. You And, 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 and that's good. Jake waking up. But you got to understand that how we've been raised and the way things are being done is not in order. Okay? It says... While this is eminently true of its doctrines, it is also true if it's facts. And that's what we bring out, facts. And what do niggas do? They make videos and then they use the truth of how the ancient world was to, uh, 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 you know, sensationalize things. And Israelites who really don't have understanding are like, these niggas are crazy. What? They rape it? Now, don't you niggas think if we were raping people, <laughs> we'd be in jail? So we, we just rape six-year-olds, nine-year-olds, 11-year-olds, then we, we just get up every day, uh, uh, handle our business, then somehow we just get to go out to the highways and the byways <laughs> and teach the word every week. Even if we were teaching to go rape. Get the, get you, you, but, but that's all right. Anyway, it says, a distinguished author has aptly said in studying the Bible, the dictionary of things, 
is almost as important as the dictionary of words. And there was one Edomite who said a good understanding of the Bible is more important than an education in, of this world. It says, it is a part of this dictionary of things that we propose to furnish in this book. Though not in a form of a dictionary, the texts are illustrated, the texts illustrated are arranged in the order which they occur in the Bible and are accompanied by explanations of the customs in which they allude. This method seems to be natural for Bible study and it's and is the, the plan followed, okay, and such and such. So these people traveled the world and studied ancient cultures, and this is a book they wrote. All right, the term of the youth's father. Okay, in the East, the originator of any custom is frequently spoken of as a father. So, yeah, like Yahawashai, okay, um, it's called a, the everlasting father. Well, people say, well, that's talking about the Most High. Well, in ancient customs, Yahawashai is the, the father of righteousness. So he can be a father as well. And, and it goes into various different you know, uh, uh, customs and things that you can read use of the term brother, you know, the burning lamp, religion of names, tent door of the time of rest, bowing hospitality, feet washing. It, it takes you to these, uh, ancient customs to where when you're reading the Bible, you're like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. Now. Okay. I get why. Now I see it. Okay, so Lord willing, I'll put this PDF in the description. It's a real good read. It's good to, you know, aid you as you read particular scriptures, but especially if you're going to be teaching this word, man, because you've got too many people teaching this word <laughs> and you're far too emotional, man. You already know where I'm going to finish it off at. Jeremiah 6, I believe in 16. Israel rejects the Lord's ways. Thus saith Yahweh, stand ye in the way and see and ask for the old paths. Okay, where is the good way and walk therein? Okay, and when you go into particular of these customs, that don't mean you have to do it. All right, but you, you're in your spirit. You're revitalized in understanding, oh, okay. Because, I mean, the mere fact that we sacrificed goats and lambs, that's that's very peculiar. All right? You may ask yourself, why would the why did the Lord why would the Lord do that? It's many things. All right, but 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 hey, as he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. A lot of you really think the Lord's ways and thoughts are your ways. And a lot of you really think Satan, the so-called white man, got it right. He's wrong. Okay? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. <laughs> That's not the role we want. So you have no rest for your soul. So the true intent of Yahweh Shem Yashai will never resonate with you. Because ultimately, you're a nigger. Jeremiah 18 and 15, because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to, uh, to walk in paths in a way cast not up. Okay? Search the scriptures, for in them, all right, you have eternal life. And they are which testify of me. So really, if you're ashamed of the ancient way, you're ashamed of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Now, granted, a lot of these things are for, uh, foreign to us. Okay, and there's a lot of these things we simply can't do. But we can go into various because Jake boasts in the law. But then when you bring out a law, oh, man, that ain't got nothing to do with salvation because it, it rubs them the wrong way. Why are you bringing that out? It's, it's in the Bible, brother. The topic came up, okay, and I, I, I brought out the truth of the matter by going into the scriptures, going into history, and showing you, okay? So, we'll leave that alone. Hopefully, y'all were edified, giving all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. 
Bashem Rechachorash, double honors to the apostles, the elders, a great millstone. Peace and salutations unto the elect. Shalom.